In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, yet in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Does anyone know where that's from? Anyone that wasn't at the 830 service know where that's from? I'll give you a hint. It's a hymn. A Christmas hymn. It's from a little town of Bethlehem. And that is hands down my favorite verse of any Christmas hymn. But not for the reason you may think. Yes, it is beautiful language and a wonderful tune. But these are not the reasons. I was formally introduced to this particular verse by Father Dick Elwood at St. Martin's in Houston. I used to moonlight, as I call it, at St. Martin's. They had a 7 a.m. service on Wednesday mornings that I used to attend. And then during certain seasons, like Lent and Advent, they would have daily Mass at 7 a.m. It was a quaint little group of between two and ten of us that would regularly attend. And Father L would use this as his offertory sentence all the time. It seemed appropriate for this particular service. It was kind of a sunrise service, right one, in an old tiny brick chapel with a small band of faithful believers. That chapel that I would later learn was the one in which I was baptized 20 years previously. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, yet in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. It may be difficult to think of the people at St. Martin's Houston as meek souls. After all, the former first lady, Mrs. Bush, had her funeral there, and former President Bush Sr. had his there right after. It's an extremely wealthy and prominent parish. And yet, there I was, a broke college student taking communion next to some of the wealthiest and most powerful people in the nation. And some wore bonnets of old and skirt suits, pearls and dresses. Some wore jeans. I even saw the occasional sandal in the summertime. Nobody cared about status in that chapel. We were there, meek souls, to receive the dear Christ. This, I think, is a theme that runs through the season of Advent. Jesus, the Christ, the incarnate man, is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter our status, our gender, our economic background, our race or ethnicity, our sexual preference, our English language proficiency, our schooling, our ability to get around, the style of our domicile, if we have one, or the type of transportation we use. Where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. And this is the basic gospel. This is the basic good news. Jesus Christ is here to love everyone, no exceptions. Where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. In the reading from Isaiah, it talks about wanting God to come down. And the prophet repeats the fact that we are all sinners, and yet we are all God's children. You meet those who remember your ways. You are our Father We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. 
Consider we are all your people. We are yours, God. Where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Advent is the time of year where we are called to be watchful. We are called to be hopeful. And the fact that Jesus Christ is available to anyone that wants him, the fact that God, the creator of everything, loves each of us enough to live and die as one of us, well, that's the most hopeful thing I've ever heard. No matter who you are or what you've done, the dear Christ is available to all. That, my friend, instills hope. Advent is a great time of year to get back to basics. It's a good time to get back to our roots. It is, after all, a season where we hear about the beginnings. We hear about the birth of Jesus. We hear about the beginnings of Christianity. The basics. But there is one thing that didn't feel real basic this morning. And I wonder if you all felt it too. That was the gospel reading. It didn't feel very basic. The apocalyptic or end times gospel reading we heard this morning has frustrated scholars because they say that Jesus is claiming that the generation that was currently living while he was talking was not going to pass away before the end times. And since it didn't happen, Jesus was wrong. And Jesus being wrong has all kinds of theological problems and implications. The scholars also don't like the fact that Jesus states that he doesn't know something. He doesn't know when the end will come. Now I read up on this while preparing my sermon and I came across one new pillar commentary on the gospel that I thought was a pretty good explanation. And it said that looking at events to which and our way of thinking are entirely separate, it may help to remember that in God's saving plan, the incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, and parousia, or second coming, are all facets of one event. Rather like the way several separate mountain ranges blend together as a single range when viewed from afar. The first and second coming of God's Son comprise one event in the divine plan. So once Jesus was born, the entire salvation plan happened. Now while that doesn't feel all that basic... It is the last section of the gospel that brings it back home, back to basics, if you will. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. It doesn't get much more simplified than that. Keep awake. And why do we need to keep awake? Because Advent is a season where we are called to be watchful and hopeful. And to do that, we must be awake. And note that Jesus doesn't say just to the Jews keep awake or just to the Romans keep awake or to any other particular group keep awake. No, Jesus, the equalizer, says what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. We must be watchful and hopeful. There is a meme going around that says, Anyone that was asked in 2015, where do you see yourself in five years, answered that question wrong. I didn't expect to be in a pandemic in 2020. I didn't expect to be ordained in 2020. I certainly didn't expect to be ordained in the middle of a pandemic in 2020. But here I am. And it makes me wonder. It makes me hopeful. It makes me a little bit excited that maybe, just maybe, even though we don't really expect it, maybe Jesus will return again soon. 
and that great equalizer will make all things new. That is hope. So we keep awake and we watch and we hope. What happens when we keep awake? What happens when we are watchful and hopeful? How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, yet in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Amen.